Hello guys, today I will be going over strings in Python. Strings are basically a sequence of char characters. You've seen me do them before. Basically if you want to print out a name, for example, or just anything, that that's basically a word. Hello world, for example. So you can write down hello world in quotation marks. This will be recognized as a string in Python. But if you want to do something with it, for example, print it, just put it into the print function. And uh, since Python recognizes the string as, well, I mean, the series of characters as a string, it will print it. And we get hello world outputted. And let's just put in type. It recognizes that as a string. Anyways, well, that was kind of redundant. I went over this before, but yeah. Strings are basically an ar basically as a data type, they're recognized as arrays. An array is basically a variable that stores information, kind of like a list, a list of characters in this case. So each letter, H E L L O, the space W O R D L D, each of these characters are arranged in an array with an index from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this will be an array of 10 characters, hello world, that's stored in our memory of our computer. Now let me, I will basically, if you want to know more about strings, you can just look it up on Google. I, what I will be doing in this video is just going over examples on how to use them. If you want the full in-depth dictionary definition, yeah, just Google strings in strings and coding and it will literally give you the full dictionary definition anyways uh, let's get started. all right so we know how to go through printing strings just type in the print function and then our string and then we can also find the type from our last video with casting so let's go over some more complex strings you can create multi-line strings using three quotation marks so let me just show you what it looks like all right, so I've assigned our variable a, our multi-line string, with three quotation marks. Oh, uh, why is this so long, yada, yada, yada. And let's just print it out. And there we go, here's our string. Now, instead of doing double quotation marks, you can also use single quotation marks. And, it, and this achieves the same effect. So again, it prints it out. And just to, uh, show you guys that it still recognizes as a string class string now what else um so yeah strings are like arrays like many other pop popular programming languages python strings in python are arrays of bytes representing unicode characters however python does not have a character data type a single character is simply a string with a length of one square brackets can be used to access elements of the string so let's go over that. Uh, control A and then Control V. All right, so here I've assigned the string "Hello World" to our variable A. Now I will go over arrays a little bit more in detail later on. But if you are familiar with arrays, you should know that when you have a variable and then you have brackets and one, this will print out the second value in our array which in this case h is the index 0 so if i put in a0 this will take the zero index this will ah, this will contact the zero index location of our array and the value in that index location is h for hello but if you want the second one we type in 1 and this will take the second value the index location 1 which will be e and we can do this all the way until 10, which is our last um, last index in our array, which would be the exclamation mark. Now let me just show you by example. It's just much easier than me talking it out. Okay, so yeah, index one, E. So index zero, H, index 10, Actually, hang on, index 9, 
yeah, sorry. Um. Okay, so yeah, nine is R. Uh, ten was L. It looked like a one, so I got a little confused over there. So D would be eleven. So the exclamation mark would be twelve. Oh yeah, it has the comma too. I forgot about that. My my counting was a bit off. So when you put in thirteen. 13 would go beyond the exclamation mark, but it will not output the quotation because that is what Python uses to recognize this as a string. So this should give us an error since it's going beyond the end of the array. And yep, string out of range. So because this string ends at index 12, putting in anything like 13 will just go beyond it. Now you can also do arrays in reverse, but I don't want to get into arrays too much because I have a separate module for that. But if you type in negative 1, this should return the last output. Basically, if you're doing negatives, it's going to go from the end. So negative 1 would be the exclamation mark. Negative 2 would be D. Negative 3 would be L. Negative 4 would be R. So let's, let's show you that. So exclamation point with negative 1. Negative 2. We get D negative 3, we get L, which looks like a 1 in this uh, font, and then negative 4, we get R, uh, negative 12, this should give us H, being the first character, uh, no, it gives us E, oh yeah, because it doesn't start at 0 when it's negative, so negative 13, this gives us an H, when you put in 0, because 0 is recognized as a positive number, Zero only works when you're starting going from left to right. When you're going from right to left, you have to start with negative one. So what would be 12 if you're going from left to right is going to be negative 13. So just to clear that up. All right, um, a few more things you can do with arrays. Well, with in arrays in general is that you can slice them. And by that, I mean you can get specific ver characters from this array of strings. I mean, a string, a string of characters. Sorry, I'm messing up. So starting at index two, which would be the first L, and you go to the you go all the way to index five, but this won't return index five. This will return index four. Five is where it stops. So it's two, three, four. This should t give us L L O. So let's just do this. Yep, we get L L O. So it starts from index location two, goes to three, four, but stops at five. So five itself doesn't get printed. So if we were to do this, turn this into seven, two, uh, let's do three parentheses seven. Three would be the second L, four would be the O, five would be the quotation mark, six would be the space, and then seven would be the W. Actually, let's, let's stop at eight, because if I stop at the space, it's not gonna, it'll be hard to see. All right. So at 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. And stops just before 8. Negative indexing, I just went over that. Okay, here's another thing you can do with arrays and even lists, or basically any data type where you can store information, is you can use the len function to get the length of an array. Which in this case works with strings as well. So if you want to know how many characters long the string is. Type in len a and it will give you the information and then the print function will print it out in the console. So just know that whatever, whatever I'm using print for you can use this with any other function if you're just writing code on your own. I'm just doing this with print just to sh show you as a reference, a point of reference. Okay so 13. 13 characters long is hello world. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep. Um, now there is the strip function. Strip function basically removes, it removes any white space from the beginning or the end, but not in the middle. So if I created a space at the beginning and the end, for example, our zero index at this point, a0 would be an empty space. 
So if I print this, it gives us an empty space because there is an empty space at zero. But if I use strip, so A, actually let me just print A just to show you. So yeah, we have our space, hello world, and then one more space that we can't see. But if you use a.strip, now it takes the spaces out at the end, but leaves the one in the middle. I know the one at the end is kind of hard to see, but just got to take my word for it. What else? Okay, lower. What the lower function does is that it returns the string in lowercase. So we have a couple of capital, le a capital letters, the capital H and the capital W in our string. A dot lower converts any capital letters into lowercase. So there we go, lowercase h and w. Let me just remove these spaces. And we also have upper, which is the opposite of lower, and the lowercase case will become a capital letter. So now it's hello world in all caps. What else? Um, replace. Basically, let me just show you. Okay. The letter you place, the character you place before the comma will be replaced with the character you place after the comma in the replace function. So our H will be replaced with a J. So when I print it, and now it says Jello World. I can do this with W. And if I run this, it's Hello World. Yeah. We have the split method, which can split a string into smaller strings. So, the way this works is it looks for a special character that you assign. That will be the instance of splitting. So, oh, let me just show you. Showing is always better than describing. Okay, a dot split. Now, I put in a quotation mark here. This is the character I wanted to split. So rather than printing out the whole hello world, it's going to print two strings, one being hello and then everything being after world. So let me just clear this to show you guys. There, it, resu it returns hello and then world with the space. So it's everything after the comma, including the space. It does return this in a list for, uh, not a list, an array formation since it has the brackets. So if you're using this in a different function, just be aware of that you will have to remove the brackets if you're just looking for the string, the substrings. Now we can also use the in keyword And we can also use the in keyword to check if there's a certain phrase within our string. So here I've created a string, assigned it to the variable text. I've created another variable x, and this is equal to the this specific string, which is the specific phrase, which is found in our string four times. And then the in keyword looks through text and then it will print x so the in keyword will take whatever phrase you put into the left of it it will search in the variable to the right of it and it will return all the phrase the number of times the phrase to the left of it is found so if i run this or actually it just returns a bool sorry i forgot about this this returns a bool so it'll return true if it finds that this phrase exists in here so let me change this. So I changed it to the phrase, to the word na. Or na. Now when I click on na, it does not appear anywhere in our string. So now I should return false when I run this code. And it did, because the phrase is not in the string. And you can use the not in to do, basically do this. Not is another keyword that basically does the inverse of whatever is in front of it. 
so this time when I put in look in the phrase look for the phrase which appears four times normally it would appear true if you're just using in but since you're using not it should appear false and it does because the inverse of true is false now if you want to find something that isn't there like nah this will return true because it's not there because you've changed the question now that you're looking for now you can also do some math with strings so you can add strings together so I have a string assigned to the variable a which has hello a string assigned to the variable B which is world and I've created a new variable that's the addition of a and B and then I just have to print C and yeah hello world now you don't have to just add variables you can also add strings to variables so a plus so a plus a space a comma and a space plus B so simply doing this before gave us the two strings combined with no space or comma but now I've added a second string I mean a third string to this equation now it gives us the full hello world with a comma and space which is exactly what's going to do next now it is important that we cannot combine strings and numbers in the same equation so if I do plus 24 24 is recognized as an integer so if I run this now this will give us an error because integers and strings do not add but we can use something called format the format function to do so so here I've created a variable age which is an integer it's assigned 36 now I have a text variable which is a string now it's important to note that at the end of the string there are two empty curly brackets this will be used in the format function these are a key characters because the string is colored orange but the brackets are colored blue that means Python recognizes the brackets as not a string but something to be used in a function so then we call in the format so text our string dot format age what the format function does it will look for these curly brackets and put in an integer except it will convert the integer or a float into a string so when I run this it prints it out my name is John and I'm 36 the 36 here isn't in the string it was an integer that was converted into a string using the format just to show you guys proof text dot oh, type parentheses So here's the string again, including the integer, but it's a, it's recognized as a string. So this integer was turned into a string. And if I did 36.5, this is now a float, not an integer, but the format will work with floats as well. And there we go. I have 36.5, but it's still a string. Now here's a more complex example of the format function. The format method takes an unlimited number of arguments as long as they're placed into their respective placeholders. So here we have quantity which is an integer has assigned 3. Item number another integer assigned 567 and then a price which is a float assigned 49.95. Now here's our string my order I want a format placeholder pieces of item format placeholder for format placeholder dollars now here in format quantity will go to the first placeholder because it's the first item placed in the format parentheses into the formats input the format functions input the first one will go to the first placeholder the second one will go to the second placeholder 
and then the third one will go to the final placeholder. So when I print this, the first one was quantity, which was three. I want three pieces of the item, five, which is the item number 567, which is placed into the second placeholder. Four price, which is $49.95, which was placed correctly into the third placeholder. So that's how you use format, the format function with more than one item to be converted into a string. And you can also use index numbers to be sure the arguments are placed in the correct placeholder. If you don't want to leave this to chance, like basically if you want these basically if you want these inputs placed in a certain area so for example the first one isn't going to the first one but to the third one or second one you can use you can do that by using index numbers sorry my voice is getting a little raspy I'm gonna take a break after this one and then get back to recording okay this time we have two as our first placeholder this will look for the item in index 2 which is 3 or price and for a second placeholder we have 0 so this is going to look for the f item in index 0 which is quantity and the last one has index of 1 which will look for the second one I think I haven't tested this I haven't tested this out so let's see what it does okay price was used first so price went to 2, I was right about that. 3, quantity was 3, that went to the second one, I was right about that. And then, yeah, the second one went to the last one. So yeah, that's how you would use it. Anyways, I'm gonna take a, sh anyway guys, I'm gonna take a short break and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, <coughs> so, okay, after using index numbers to find, to use the format function to place integers in the correct placeholders, um, you can also use the escape character to basically escape the flow of the string if you want to add in something else. For example, like these brackets, these are considered an escape character. They escape the flow of the string, which allows the format to place an integer that is converted into a string, and then it continues back into a string. Um, <clears throat> so here's an example of the escape character being used. In this case, our escape allows us to show quotation marks within our string. Because the quotation marks are also the characters we use to identify a string, if we do not use these escape markings, the word Viking just kind of falls out. It's throwing an error because it doesn't recognize this as a string, it's just a variable in the middle of a string. So if I were to run this, this would be an error. But by using a couple of backslashes, this lets Python know that this is part. Basically, it lets Python know that the quotation marks to the right of these Backslashes are part of the string rather than being key identifiers to identify a string. So that's what you can use escape characters for. Um, here's a list of escape characters. You can use a single quotation with a backslash, double backslash. You can use one for new line. So, yeah, backslash and n. So if I run this, it basically splits the string into three lines because the new line is being used twice. So you can use one for new line, character turn, tab, backspace, form feed. <sighs> now, here's where I'm kind of reluctant to go ahead. We have a lot of methods, a lot of built-in functions in Python that we can use with strings. So I've already gone over a couple like upper, um, lower, yeah, lower converts the string into a lower case. Um, upper, yeah, upper does the opposite, turns it into uppercase. I've gone over with strip. Um, title. Okay, let's just try. Let's just try these all out. It's best to show you guys with, a, with an example. So yeah. Okay, title. It should convert the first character of each word into an uppercase. So let me just get rid of these escape characters. So it's one single string. So it's easier to follow. And there we go. Every single word has its first letter capitalized. So that's what title does. Um, 
Okay, I'm gonna go over as many of these as I can. But if, I, if, if this just starts getting a little too much, I'm just gonna end the video there. Sorry guys, but you can read the descriptions on your own and then test them out yourselves. I'm not gonna do everything for you guys. Also, I'm probably to go over a numbers a numbers video for reference that goes over how Python handles numbers. Um, arrays video, list video, dictionary, sets, data structures, heaps, sorting functions, and all of them are gonna have a large list of built-in functions. So I'm gonna go over some of the most used ones that I know of, but I'm not gonna go through everything. If you guys, but I'm gonna list them all out in a notepad form like this, so you guys can try them out on your own. But I'll just go over a few of these. So here we have capitalize and. This one converts the first character into an uppercase. So, here I've turned the first character into a lowercase. Let's see if this works. I mean, it should, but for example purposes. And it does. What else? Um, the count function returns the number of times a specific value occurs in a string. So, let's try this. Um. Let's look for the value e. Let's see how many times e appears in a string. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's accurate. Um, let's go with. Hmm. You know, I think e was a good one because a lot of the other ones are kind of rare. Anyway, um, index. So just a string for a specific value and returns the position of where it was found. This one's a good one to uh, help you guys just better grasp how indexes work. Indexes are very common in programming. Not just Python, but just like in general for almost everything. So, so we have e being repeated five times in our string. The first one is at index position one, which is the second index position. It starts with zero. Third one, I mean the second one should be, let's see, three, four, five, six, which should be in this index position six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The third one should be 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Fourth one should be in 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. And the last one should be in index position 37. So let's see. Okay, so it's only giving us the first one. Let me change this to A. Yeah, A appears in index position 3, so it's only doing this once, it's not repeating. Um, let me try making a function. Or x in text print x dot count e. And then I turn this into a comment. Again, I've mentioned this before, but comments are not run as code. So if you want to temporarily remove a line of code, but you want to probably bring it back later, just comment it out, and that should be enough. Alright, um, this is a little experiment, but let's see if I can print out every instance of e. Okay, this one is interesting. It's actually very interesting. So it's returning kind of like a bool value, zero being false, one being true. So here's basically every time x ran using the in using the for loop to search text, it returns whether it finds e. So it finds e in the first index, then in the sixth one, then in the ninth one, so on and so forth. But it's not telling us that this, it's not telling us the index position. Or the index value of where it is. Again, it is very important to test out these methods and functions just so you have a better grasp grasp on how they work. Um, let's see if there is a function that finds it. Okay, there's a find function. Let's see if find works for more than one for more than one instance. Let me just clear this out. Nope, it only works once. Um, okay, let me try the find what function again, but this time in a for loop. For x in text, print x dot find e. Okay, it's kind of the same thing it was doing with the count, except the zeros have been replaced with negative one, and the one has been replaced with zero. Interesting. Simply knowing what it will output is also important because you never know when you have to use a function that 
works with metadata like this. So it's, uh, it's always good to practice and learn on your own. I'm just making these videos for reference, so you guys can feel free to come back to it.